turn my phone off. Welcome, everybody, to the Infernal Brotherhood of the Scruffy-Looking Nerf Herders. This is a live YouTube video podcast by Star Wars fans for Star Wars fans. And today, we're going to be doing our review of The Secrets of the Sith. Not to be confused with the Book of the Sith. Right. This one's a little bit more childish, but... Oh, no, not but too so often. are we. <laughs> exactly! It kind of works out. <laughs> it works out perfectly. Um, so, before we dive into our discussion, because... Basically, what I did, I don't... Did you write down notes or anything? Uh, no, I okay. completely <laughs> fucking forgot. I was reading did it at like... Read it? Yeah, I read it at okay. like 2 in the morning, so I <laughs> was focused on the reading. <laughs> um, yeah, before we dive into that, just a quick note. We have Wookiee Life Day, or actually just Life Day, coming up mm -hmm. this week. Yep. So for those of you who want to watch the... Um, holiday special there's a, a link that i'm going to be putting in the um description of the video after this to a really actually pretty good quality on youtube right now but you could also check out the lego star wars holiday life day uh special or it's just lego star wars holiday special but um in either case you should celebrate in some way so absolutely if you could if you had your uh, your druthers if you could you know there is no expense too great how would you celebrate Life Day? Same way I do every year. Get drunk in my Life Day robe and make my wife suffer watching it with me. <laughs> now, there's two I versions that I marriage. don't have because it's illegal or whatever. Um, one with commercials, one without commercials. I always prefer the one with commercials. Mm -hmm. It's so much better to see those toy commercials. Oh, they're great. They're just yeah. great. Yeah, the one that's on uh, YouTube, that link, it does have commercials as well. Awesome. And it looks pretty good, too. Like, it's it's better than the one that I definitely don't have, so. I'll have to check it out, see yeah. if it's any better than the one I don't have. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, happy Life Day preemptorily, because I'm not going to talk to you on Life Day, because I'm going to be enjoying Life Day my own way. Yeah, how are you going to do it? Is getting drunk and peeking in your window so I can watch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> hiding in your bushes. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> as long as you have your little orb with you, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Then my neighbors won't think anything was weird. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk a little bit. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I actually had. We got pictures. Pictures. All right, hold on. This is going to drive me insane. Out there in uh, video land, I've got to adjust this just slightly. I give myself a little bit more color. Now I'm going to be super red. <laughs> but I don't care. Okay, so uh, this, of course, is the original poster for the original holiday special that george lucas mm -hmm. hates more than anything else in the world <laughs> arguably more than even disney right now <laughs> right i i did love and i'm sure we'll talk about it but how he even was like oh i had nothing to do with that really in the book of boba, or the boba <laughs> fett thing <laughs> yeah every chance he gets he just throws it in there like um so what would you like uh for your entree he's like i had nothing to do with the star wars holiday special <laughs> and <laughs> so i'll take funny. the steak <laughs> Like, that's just him. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the poster for the new one. It's a lot. Of, I had a lot of fun when we did a watch through. Um, yeah, it was, it was okay. I'll probably end up watching it. I don't, I don't think, think I've funny. watched it since then, to be honest. I haven't either. <laughs> at all. I just yeah. have had no desire at all. But um, I yeah. probably Terrifying won't. Tales. I've watched that a few times because that's just good fun. But Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to be talking about this gem. This is a hardcover. I mean, they say it's a children's book, but it really just covers, from Darth Sidious's perspective, mm -hmm. the Sith. You know, the history of the Sith. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't dive into the stuff that they haven't made canon yet, which would be like the real deep cut origins of the Sith. But it does sort of dust mm -hmm. over the, you know, it gives you the, the overarching scope of what it is. I mean, just in general. Mm -hmm. what was your what was your take on this did you enjoy it was it too childish 
I mean, I was fucking sold from page one where there's a goddamn pop up. Like, I love, I love pop up books. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Like, it, this is actually probably my only children's pop up book. Like, everything else I own is like an adult book that just so happens to be a pop up book. So I kind of feel weird now having a children's pop up book. But I'm it was little, fun. I'm a little bummed that there's not more in depth pop ups. Yeah. Like I yeah, like the I, pop-ups where you have to like crack open the book to have them reveal themselves mm -hmm. and then there's still interactivity. Mm -hmm. Like those are the pop-ups that like, you know, they're great. Yeah. I mean, I I did like the first one, honestly, that's what sold me on the book was opening that up. You got your little pop-up and it's the Sith code. And it's yeah. like, "Okay, yay, that's canon." Cuz yeah. I don't remember it ever being canonized before this. I, no, I don't think it's ever been mentioned. So at least nothing I've seen. I, but again, I don't, you know, I don't look through every tiny little thing. I, maybe mm -hmm. it's in a, a canonized comic or something. See, that'd be my guess. Like anything that we don't know about, it's probably in the damn comics. Yeah, for sure. Because there's just too many and they're not really that good. They, they put them out like crazy though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like they took, <laughs> instead of focusing on the films, they just focus on, <laughs> or, you know, even arguably they don't focus as much time on the novels. They, it's just like pumping mm -hmm. out tons of different comic series and crossover comic series and comic event series. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. How can anyone afford all of them? I don't get it. Uh, that's why I don't buy comics anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it gets crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. But we're talking about this. This is released October 12th, 2021. So just a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. It is written by Mark Sumerick. I hope I said that correctly. But the illustrations are what I really appreciate in this. Yeah. Um, Sergio Gomez Silvan. I hope I said that right. Because he is really talented. And I yeah, really enjoyed yeah. the illustrations in this a lot. Yeah. I only had like one complaint about the illustrations. Oh, what's that? Fucking the um, lineage of um, Sidious. Yeah. Like, they had his master behind him. It's like, come on, man. Just right. throw us fucking fanboys a little bone. Yeah. Make him a mun. Give him the elongated head. That's mm -hmm. it. Especially because it was a shadow, for fuck's sake. Other than yeah. that, I thought it was amazing. Well, I want to ask you about that, though. Because that is an area that's ripe for exploration. And mm -hmm. they may explore that in the Acolyte series that's coming out. You know? And if not, they're, if, if not touching on Sidious, then they might just touch on Plagueis as being a new apprentice in the Alkalite, because I'm not sure the time frame of that one. Mm -hmm. But I don't um, think they've said just yet. Yeah. My assumption is it's going to be after the High Republic and before mm -hmm. all of the films and stuff, but I, yeah. who knows? I, even if it was before the High Republic, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah, because then we would... Yeah, that Old Republic is great. It's just great. Mm -hmm. But um, would you be okay if they changed it up and made him some other species? No, I'd be fucking livid. <laughs> I would burn I, the house I would, down. <laughs> I would fucking find somebody to punch. Um, I, I would apologize. Run, but Jenna. Run. First person I saw afterwards. Not her. Fuck, did she murder my ass? <laughs> I'd, I'd go find a stranger and punch him in the face. Okay. Come on. Don't that makes ridiculous. more sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be fucking livid. Like, that is still mm. one of the greatest Star Wars books ever made. Um, like, Darth Plagueis was fan fucking tastic like there was a reason why it was held back for a year um like they put their time in that shit so mm -hmm. i I'd, I'd be so pissed if they completely changed it up yeah. like and i understand not all of it's going to stay the same like um you know darth maul's uh like how he came to be mm -hmm. uh, that's been completely changed um and this book even does that yeah. but like i don't want any more of it changed than it already has yeah, no, I agree. And and that's why I do like that, you know, with people like Favreau and Filoni sort of, you know, spinning the, at least the series content, they are leaning on some old school Star Wars mm -hmm. stuff to try to bring in as much as possible, even if it's not exactly, you know, the way it was. It's it's close enough that it makes me feel okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's all that matters. Yeah. Whether or not we feel okay about it. Exactly. I mean, the, we're the demographic, period. Yeah. Well, and that's well, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about with this book in particular is that they call it a children's book, but you know adults are buying this, so why are you even pretend? <laughs> right. Uh, no twelve year old is gonna like plunk down hard earned cash and say, "I want the the, the book of, or the secrets of the Sith book." Mm -hmm. They're gonna, I don't know, go well, especially get a because video game. it's it's a pretty small book. Like it's mm -hmm. what thirty two pages. Like yeah. it's tiny. Like I. 
I don't know. They packed in a lot. Maybe it's just me. I buy books based on girth. <laughs> like, I'm much more a girth man. Just saying. <laughs> Show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it was the right size for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not a Chris guy. I'm okay with the the pencil thinness of this yeah. volume. It's easier to handle all at once. Yeah. Um you don't have to work up to it. No, I, I understand. But it was like it was very much, you know, you sit down and you just go mm -hmm. cover to cover. I mean it's, yeah. it's it's a pretty quick read. Um mm -hmm. but there was information that I thought was worth noting um that was you know added a little bit of clarity. They mm -hmm. tried to do a little bit of band-aiding um from the sequel trilogy <laughs> yeah and i have to be honest i didn't mind the way they approached it yeah like like that's that's been one of the biggest bitch fits with this new saga in general is mm -hmm. the lack of like, explanation um and that you know they put so much time and effort into side novels and comics um even like the video games and stuff where none of it has any bearing on the other movies it's like we just want something to just fill in those gaps even just a tiny bit. Um, and I I felt it did do that. Like it, I'm not going to say it made me want to watch um, uh, what The Last Jedi again, but, right. you know, maybe I'll not hate it as much. Or Rise of Skywalker. Hopefully. Right? No, I, I, I like the Rise of Skywalker. It was, I think, my appreciation of that movie is because the second one just kind of was like, well, fuck. <laughs> can't get much worse than this i guess i okay. hope yeah well and that's something that we had we had spoken about uh back and forth a little bit is that what we would like to do is is maybe talk about you know, the aspects of the films that maybe we didn't enjoy as much as we enjoy the older ones but talk about them in the context of what we did like about them because mm -hmm. we've you know for years we've hammered on on some of these films uh some more than yeah. others but there are elements that are great yeah. And so it is definitely yeah. something that we're going to explore. So there's not just negativity because yeah. again, we can't hate it so much that we, you know, we're still talking about it. We're, you know, we're still obsessed mm -hmm. with this, this made up fictional world that uh, we're still doing podcasts about it. So yeah, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, any star Wars is better than no star Wars, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we sat through fucking resistance. So <laughs> just saying. Yes, <laughs> okay. So um, there's some interesting notes that I, I made note of and, and let me know if, if this is just common knowledge that you already thought, mm -hmm. or if it is something new for you as well. Um, and there's, I, I broke it down by section. So, you mm -hmm. know, a section headline, and then it's basically this whole book is broken down like that. It's just yeah. has a little headline and then a little blurb, and then it goes to the next headline and the next little blurb. Mm -hmm. So in order for, you know, for a little bit of clarity for those who want to go back after the fact, maybe, and look into some of these claims, if you, they are new to you, you can do that for a little bit more explanation as well. But what I was a little bit surprised by was that in the unlimited power and the balance of the four sections, uh, Sidious is admitting that Anakin is almost as powerful as he is. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was Anakin. Like, yeah. not a fully trained master. And he was almost as powerful as Sidious was. That tells me that if he's the only person, that the only Jedi that's close to as powerful as Sidious at that, you know, Revenge of the Sith era, that means he's more powerful than Yoda. Mm -hmm. Than Windu. Like... Right. Do you think that's the implication? I mean, that's honestly, even from the movies, that's kind of what I've, I assumed. Okay. Um, I mean, one, he's the chosen one, like just yeah. plain and simple. Obviously if he's the Jesus of the Jedis, he's got to be the all powerful one. Um, just not fully realized. Um, yeah. I mean, Yoda even talks about being clouded in revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's powerful obviously, but, he doesn't have the openness of Anakin, so I buy that. Yeah. Windu, I mean, Windu's just a badass, but, I mean, he's more brute than anything, and, yeah. So it, it doesn't surprise me that it was put out that way. Um, I mean, that's part of the reason why there's the armor. Um, yeah. It keeps him in constant pain, and he has to focus on making the pain work, also making the machinery work, and, you know, thus it makes Palpatine stronger than he is. Yeah. A way to keep him down it, it was it almost stuns me because this this is not this is told as the emperor right before the end of mm -hmm. the rise of skywalker film so mm -hmm. you know it's it's as if 
he was hanging in that machine and he's like, I'm going to take some notes. You yes. Know, and make a children's <laughs> book about it. Uh, and he had his Sith Eternal publish it for him. So mm -hmm. all of his knowledge is from that point on, which means he saw Luke Skywalker rise and fall. And, mm -hmm. he, you know, he talks about this idea of, you know, Luke being pretty weak. And if it wasn't for his father, he would have killed Luke. So that mm -hmm. says that even Luke was not as strong as Anakin was in his prime. Mm -hmm. But according to, you know, old legends, George Lucas said that Luke was the most powerful Jedi ever. Like, yeah. at least I, I mean, heard that. he was <laughs> like, he was one of the most powerful beings that ever existed prior to the Disney takeover. Right. And so I just think it's weird that they would take that idea and say, eh, no, it's the dad. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Why? You have to, like, renege on that, too? Just keep something consistent, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, they're thing. not... I don't think they necessarily are, because, I mean, this isn't... I mean, this is canon, but it isn't canon, because, I mean, it's it's essentially his memoirs. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just sort of like, well, fuck, what do I do now? Yeah. I'll write some notes. <laughs> While well, he's hanging in his weird chair. <laughs> so, so it's a little biased, what he's talking about. Yeah, and I do like that aspect, too, because he makes fun of the, the fact that they think that Anakin's the chosen one, and he mm -hmm. clearly doesn't. Um, but I do like the idea, and I'm going to be jumping ahead a little bit, because they talk about the dyad at the very end of this. And mm -hmm. he says that he was trying to um, uh, make a vergence with Anakin. So the vergence is like mm -hmm. a weaker version of a dyad. Um and that's where the whole Sith rule of two came in, in this new, you know, canonized world that we're living in, where the rule of two was actually just two beings trying to feed off of each other and create this virgins in the force, which makes them mm -hmm. more powerful. And it almost, you know, kind of gamifies the idea that it unlocks new abilities by mm -hmm. being connected. And if he could actually find a dyad with someone, then that would be something infinitely greater, which, you know, then goes to sort of explain why Ray and Kylo are able to do, you know, some really insane abilities like healing yeah. and passing items through time and space back and forth to each other. And that actually makes me feel a little bit better about it mm -hmm. because I, I had a real hard time when I first watched that. And just, I don't know why, but just reading it in this, for some reason, it, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with the idea of it. You yeah, know, that it, it was something that he was trying to work on with Anakin, and he tried to do it with his other apprentices, and his master tried to do it with him, and and mm -hmm. so on up the the historical ladder of the Sith. Yeah, that they just they they've all been trying to do that, and they just haven't been able to because it's so rare. Yeah, okay. well, I, I liked how they made it into myth. Like, although as I say it now, it kind of makes me a little like, not really mad, but just like, come on, <laughs> it's like they're trying to. You know, put the band-aid on it. Like, sure. no, this is cool because it was a Sith thing. I was like, yeah, cool. Sith mythology. Wait, are you guys going to explain more? No? Okay. <laughs> nope. I guess I'll go on to the next part of the book. Yeah, time to move on. Um, here's one that really kind of... It confused me. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is from the Pulling the Strings. It says that Snoke was not a clone. He was an experiment. Mm -hmm. But he had Force ability. So he was created as, he. Uh, they didn't say, uh, he was a separate entity from cloning manipulated by Sidious, but that he was created by a genetic experiment by the Sith Eternal, which is his followers, um, mm -hmm. and that he had force sensitivity. So he was a, a separate a genetic experiment entity, not actually the Emperor, mm -hmm. even though in the film... I thought it was very clear that the Emperor was like, no, that was me. That was, Snoke is nothing. I was. That's what I thought. Was so, he was an avatar? Yeah. And so this whole time, I'm like, wait a second. So he's not an avatar. He's and he's not even really an official clone of anything. Mm. He was just this ex experimental being that had autonomy and force ability. I. And then you were just manipulating him too. Like, what the? Get your story straight, people. Right. It's very confusing to me. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I just kind of glossed over all that. <laughs> like, I don't know, do, do you have any, like, headcanon way of, of rationalizing the idea of, like, Snoke at no. this point after that? <laughs> no, not at all. Like, the whole idea um, of clones having force sensitivity and shit is something that, 
it's been kind of hit or miss throughout the legends and stuff where you could do it. No, you can't do it. Yeah, sure. Here's an example, but here's an example of how you can't. Um, I'm just so fucking confused as to where Snoke even came from then, yeah. because if, I mean, the, if he's a clone of something, because we saw clones in the fucking vats there that were Snoke, who is he? Where did he come from? Why do we give a shit? Mm-hmm. Like, that's I, that's part of my problem with it. And, and that's not this book. That's just the whole Snoke shit in general. It's like, who the fuck is he and why do we care? Yeah. I mean, and it's not just that because they played a huge, like, Snoke played a big role in the mm -hmm. comics. Um turning kylo ren over mm -hmm. and he had this whole like weird lush vegetable planet area that he lived in and that's where supposedly mm -hmm. luke had met him and stuff too so there's like this whole section of what snoke has done and did and influenced mm -hmm. and everything that is now we just thought after the rise of skywalker okay well the band-aid would be that that would be the emperor but now the emperor is saying no that wasn't me that was a different mm -hmm. entity that i was pulling the strings of yeah so <laughs> What yeah. the fuck? I don't know. It just it made it worse to me. Like instead of yeah. saying, "Oh, this is a, a nice little band-aid that stuck on you," now I'm just confused. Yeah. No, that's they're pretty good at that. Um and yeah. like the whole timeline thing, like a lot of this shit seemed really cool and then I started thinking, "Wait. How did that work with the timeline?" <laughs> Because there's a lot of, the, like, especially when it starts talking about the Sith Eternal and, like, the different aspects of the Sith Eternal. Yeah. It's like, how fucking long was this shit going on for? It had to be from the beginning. But even from the beginning, like, how do you have generations upon generations, like, multiple, like, three or four generations of acolytes when, it's like, this is, like, what, 40 years, 50 years going on? Right. But I, I don't know. The only thing yeah, I can it's... think of it is it was only one generation from the original Sith Acolyte groups. Mm. You know, the Sith um, Eternal group that was yeah. the like the, the operators of the spacecraft and builders of the spacecraft. Because otherwise, yeah, you're right. There could not be more than one generation. Like, they're just not the Yeah, I just, it. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand how you could have that much devotion in just one generation. Like, did you gotta have multiple generations I mean, of brainwashing to make it work. You know, Jim Jones. That's true. I mean, That's true. Never mind. You add in some like sparkly Sith stuff and <laughs> people. That's <don't> true. <laughs> um, Give me something sparkly. I'm like, ooh. Yes, yeah, seriously. I'll be, I'll be your Sith <laughs> uh, they did talk about them trying the Sith Eternal trying to clone Snoke and I'm sorry, uh, Sidious, and mm -hmm. failing over and over again, having one clone that actually worked, but it wasn't Force-sensitive, and that was the the mm -hmm. parent of Rey. And so mm -hmm. he basically just threw him away, saying, hey, you know, maybe someday he'll become useful to me in some way, and he just yeah. let his clone wander the Earth, like Cain or something. <laughs> That's just weird. Like, yeah. it, was he cloned on Exegol as a baby? And then they were just like, eh, send the baby away. I, so I who guess. raised the fucking baby? Like, I don't understand this at all. None of this makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, okay, I'll believe it because it's Star Wars. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> the dad goes, has Rey, and that's when the Emperor's like, ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. I feel a disturbance. <laughs> okay. Now you know that she's out there. Um, right. The Dark Apprentices. I like this section because it talked about a bunch of different types of the Force Entities, brought in some of the stuff mm -hmm. from the Chuck Wendig trilogy, which I really liked about like the, yeah. the acolytes of the beyond that. I thought that was a great story point that they just shit the bed on. Yeah. 100%. But they said in this, that um, the Sith acolytes saw the force as a river. And they believed that by destroying Sith Arcana, they could use the dark side in order to alter the future towards their favor. And then ultimately they ended up um, saving it and using it. But, um, I thought that was an interesting approach to the idea of these acolytes of the beyond, you know, because it, it did say that they were going around collecting like Darth Vader stuff and, you know, a bunch mm -hmm. of Sith stuff and they all, they all wore helmets and stuff. It made me think that they were going to be the Knights of Ren, but they clearly weren't. Yeah. And then the Knights of Ren are just some fucking rowdy ass teenagers. <laughs> like that's basically <laughs> it. Youngsters. 
with yeah. uh, just a penchant, a shadow of the dark side in them, as they put it. In yeah, the just walking around, flipping a nickel, chewing on a toothpick. <laughs> Fucking real hooligans. <laughs> yeah, now I'm trying to think of uh, what we do in the shadows. What's his name? <laughs> Jackie Daytona. Daytona. <laughs> <laughs> they're just a bunch of Jackie Daytonas. That's all they are. Uh, the Knights of they Ren. They wish they were. I do like like the the fact that they're saying no, no, no. This is this is a legendary organization mm-hmm. that is just sort of passed down. And, you know, it's like Hell's Angels, and there's chapters in different areas and stuff. And this is just the local <laughs> newest chapter yeah. that uh, Ray or um, Kylo took over. I don't know why, but I kind of like that idea because you are gonna have those like you know. Back 100 years ago, my grandparents used to talk about this really killer, force-sensitive group called the Knights of Ren. And then these young kids are like, yeah, let's be the new Knights of Ren. Come on, guys. <laughs> you know? I mean, it sounds awesome to me. It's based off of something much cooler than what they ended up being. Um, and they yeah. also talked about their dark apprentices and um, mm-hmm. talking about how the balance of the force equals drowning out the light and freeing the darkness. Um, and I believe that the Sith Eternal were their dark apprentices. They're the ones doing all the hard work in the background, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, off well, and, and they were essentially the ones that were like, like they believed in the dark side, wanted to fulfill the prophecy of the dark side, but weren't force sensitive. And I also like, like, I think that's a great idea. I mean, the fact mm-hmm. is, you know, you would have cult followers, mm-hmm. you know, we, we have cult followers with, total douchebags that convince people to do insane things mm-hmm. and they're just like regular dudes if you had someone with sith dark side power hells yes they would have tons of people following them of mm-hmm. course you have people devoted to rock stars and they can't choke people from a distance <laughs> <laughs> right you well know, and, and it's something that's been a part of the star wars universe for you know years anyways like look at the sith empire right the majority of people weren't force sensitive yeah. They were just ruled by the Sith that were. Yeah, that's so, true. Back when the yeah. Sith were a species. They were a people. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the uh, exile on Exegol idea that, you know, they, they did. Like, this was a plan that he had from the very, very beginning. He's going to mm-hmm. build up his empire. And if that ends up uh, working, then awesome. If not, he's always got this contingency plan in the background, yeah. always working. And that just says, you know, if you watch the prequels, you know he was a couple steps ahead of everyone. Everyone. So why would that stop? You know, yeah. I mean, it just sort of makes through that. I'm sorry, it makes sense that he would carry that through. And we had mm-hmm. that in the EU because he had tons of cloning vats back then as well. Yeah. So on on different planets. Yeah, this was just another extension of that, and so it wasn't a big hurdle for me to believe at all. No, no, not at all. Um, and I I do like the idea because he was saying that he's. You know, he's like the most powerful Sith entity, you know, the p- most powerful Sith uh, ever. And, you know, we do have this tradition of these Sith who become so much more powerful than just any individual user that they sort of like absorb others' energy and stuff mm-hmm. in, in like the Old Republic, for example. So why not now, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I I bought that from the get-go. Yeah. Because, I mean, essentially, that's what it is. Like, it's always, you know, just like what the rule of two is. It's the master to pass on the knowledge and the student or the, the apprentice that wants to absorb all the knowledge. Like, that's just, yeah, it makes sense. They would, like, physically absorb everything that they can. And it just, it, it makes me really appreciate the idea that he's not just, he's not just a powerful dude. Like, he mm-hmm. is this near omnipotent entity of darkness. Yeah. And that creates a whole different frame of of looking back at the original trilogies and the prequel trilogies Mm -hmm. i think it makes it much more interesting especially if you do take in consideration the plagueis novel because then you get this whole idea of him even manipulating his master for a little bit at the end yeah which is very very little bit i'd argue the entire fucking book yeah it was great i gotta read it again but it was great that's so good um the final order I hated the idea that that he would have these, you know, like the empire and then um, he would destroy it uh, because they couldn't protect him. And then we had this new order and then the final film was the final order. Mm -hmm. But now with time and distance and this book, I'm kind of okay with the idea of it. Yeah. It makes sense that he would have those cult members working on his behalf. 
It would make mm. sense that he would have a contingency plan. He would want to punish those who were not uh, able to successfully, you know, have his back. That's yeah. you know, vengeance. That's Sith all the way. So, yeah, he would take the, the smallest pieces of what worked and then build something new. Um, and the whole thing just makes sense. It doesn't jive when you look at the novel connections because there's a lot of holes. Uh, kind of. Like, the whole idea of the contingency, it's like that has stayed pretty consistent from the novels mm -hmm. to the book or the to the comics to, you know, even this shit. Um, I, I mean, mean uh, like more realistically, like the characters in Chuck Wendig's novels mm -hmm. that are leading into the New Order. Gotcha. The remnants of the Empire, we never see them again. We never hear of them mm -hmm. again. Like Sloan, for example. We just, yeah. they just sort of disappear. And then suddenly Snoke comes out of nowhere. And you're like, wait, wait, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And yeah. in the books, they're like, oh, he, he came in and he took over. But there's just not enough about this experimental entity in order mm -hmm. to make it have any sort of continuity. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, that always kind of bugs me. I, I just need Give me another children's book, people. <laughs> right? So I understand it. <laughs> why Snoke is important and why you should care. Yeah. <laughs> Dummy's Guide to Snoke. That's what I need. <laughs> as long as it's got some pop-ups, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this ugly mug popping up. <laughs> um, so the Sith Eternal were trained in the ways of the Sith from birth. And I think it's important to, to clarify that they weren't Sith. They were mm -hmm. just trained in the ways of the Sith, which is a kind of cool idea because that follows through with the Sith troopers. It's just saying that they were hyper aggressively trained and indoctrinated, mm -hmm. not that they had any force powers or anything. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, maybe with the background of, you know, those, the old school comics of the old Republic and uh, reading some of the novels and the EU era, I'm okay with that idea. I guess mm -hmm. you know, there are some people who, who sort of like fight back and say, that doesn't make no sense. Why call them Sith at all then? Why not just call them, you know, your troopers? But Because it's fucking cool. That's why. <laughs> Fuck off. Next <laughs> question. Red. Jesus. <laughs> Next question. Um, and that the Sith Eternal actually built the Armada and it was their offspring that operated the Armada. I do got, I got to say, I'd love to see like a sort of side comic or young adult novel of these offspring just complaining like we're just stuck here on this stupid <laughs> planet the galaxy's got to be so much bigger why can't we go out and see things you know like a luca i was gonna go to the tashi station buy some power converters but it's the sith eternal whining <laughs> like, yeah I'd, I'd read it <laughs> there's got to be little whining kids down there doing that mm -hmm. there has to be until these stupid re rebels come and kill them all Jerks. bastards um, they never think about the casualties the civilian casualties it's really <laughs> fucked up People always want to cheer for the terrorist organizations, it's but true. <laughs> it's true. They they're fucking assholes. The rebels are pretty much just the Taliban, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> that's just you heard it here first. <laughs> um, so Moraband. Here's one that it really felt like they just sort of renamed things for no reason. No, no. This is uh, this goes back to um, the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. Like that, that was, was explained. That was new though, right? Like in the EU, it was always Coravan, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was it was Clone Wars that changed it um, right. because he wanted to hide the seat of the Sith. Okay. But yeah, in, in the EU it was always Coravan. But I do like that idea that the reason why he named changed the name mm -hmm. was so that he could, you know, hide the origins. And then he, he mentioned that he never went back and investigated, but he would hear these whispers from these mm -hmm. ancient Sith willing to give him their secrets and he was just like you know i'd really like to but i, I don't got the time <laughs> i gotta deal with this whole fucking vader yeah. guy i mean it, i i that is ripe for exploration in mm -hmm. a story like give me a oh my God. series give me something some fucking <clears throat> indiana jones style exploration oh my gosh. with palpatine that would be fantastic <laughs> or even like if, if it's not Palpatine, you know, maybe Luke hears it too, and they're trying to mm -hmm. pull him to the dark side, and we can get that aspect of the EU, you know, Luke life that we never got in the. Um, oh, that'd be so dope. In the canon, he could just go to Moraband and and face off against Bane or something. I mean, fuck, there's so many cool things. Those are the okay. best parts of all of the Jedi Knight video games to me. Was visiting ancient Sith 
um, tombs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and like seeing these ancient stuff, having to fight them in some cases or or get empowered by them. I just thought it was so cool. Um, And I like, like Mustafar, for example, he talks about how Sidious still believes that there is like greater secrets beneath the surface to be Mm -hmm. explored. And I just love that idea. Oh, yeah. Because it makes it makes uh, Mustafar just like another Moraband. You know, there's these ancient secrets that have not yet been uncovered or explored that are just waiting, just waiting. I want to go. Yeah, I want to go to <laughs> there yeah. right now. Um, and then yeah. uh, ultimately, the, the the rule of the two is just the pale imitation of the doctrine of the dyad, as they refer to it. Mm-hmm. In this is that they're always just trying to go for that unity of of power and trying to find some way to to use each other in order to be stronger, you know, together and stuff. So mm-hmm. I just kind of like that idea. So, yeah, I don't know. Was there anything that in this that stood out to you as, as really, really interesting or made it worthwhile or, or was it just kind of a fun read for you? Oh, it was just kind of a fun read. Um, I mean, the one thing I will say that I feel like it added to mm-hmm. was the little bit more explaining the, um, the mythology, I guess, behind the dyad. Yeah. Cause that's just something that it's like, Oh, that's a word we're going to use in this film. Hooray. You guys buy it. Cause it's star Wars. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of always seemed stupid as fuck to me, but, um, yeah, having read this, giving it just a little bit of a backstory, it's like, okay, I'll buy it. Yeah. And I do like that. They tie it into the rule of two so that you mm-hmm. do feel like, okay, well they were always trying to do that. They just mm-hmm. couldn't find the right, connection or something yeah um and i do actually really like the idea of it now one thing that really still kind of bothers me um and i don't know why because we see it paralleled in anakin and luke is this idea of simply because ray is the progeny of uh palpatine's clone that that's why she's so powerful that's the thing that i still can't wrap my head around because even luke had to go through extensive training in order mm-hmm. to get close to in this version of it um, as powerful as Anakin, but Ray just immediately can do Force lightning for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like, well, okay, so that honestly, the the whole dyad thing and Palpatine explaining that that like he was the one that created that connection. That's where I kind of excuse it a little bit. Because, I mean, yeah, obviously, if he's mending or melding those two characters together and Kylo Ren's a powerful fucking dude, like, I mean, if they're one and the same, why wouldn't she be able to access his abilities? That's the other thing that I found interesting, because my my takeaway of this was that he was trying to get them together, like, you know, pull the connection, but he didn't know that Mm -hmm. they were going to actually be a dyad. And that he was surprised when he found out that they were. And that's when he was like, okay, now I need to, we need to take care of this. Cause I, I need to be, I need to be yeah. a part of this. <laughs> I need to reread that, I guess. <laughs> but that was just my, my take. Well, I could yeah. be extrapolating and, and adding in my own headcanon mm-hmm. while I read it. Because I had always thought that he had planned the whole thing. But after having read the book, I was like, oh no, he didn't plan it. He just capitalized on it. Mm-hmm. But maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I need to take another look at it. But either way, I I'm with you. It it made me feel a little bit better about it. I have this, like, I feel like I have, like, hair <laughs> hanging down. I'm, like, trying to get it off my face. <laughs> um, it made me feel a little bit better about the mm-hmm. entire thing. And, and you know, you mentioned that it didn't make you want to watch Last Jedi or anything like that. This makes me want to watch Rise of Skywalker again. Yeah. No, definitely. I <clears throat> like it really didn't. And that's the thing. Like, it was, it has its faults, but I, I liked it. It was a good movie. I haven't seen it since that first time. Really? Yeah. Um, I've, fuck. Yesterday morning, I, I watched like... the behind-the-scenes documentary about the uh, like the legacy of the Skywalkers or whatever documentary on the extras. Mm-hmm. It's on Disney Plus for it, and it got me. Like I immediately I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to sit down <laughs> and watch this again because, and I tried once before and I couldn't do it. There's just some I don't know. There's something about that bugs me, but the way that they, the the actors. And the, the creators of it, the writers and the producer and director talk about how they're trying to pay off some of these more obscure ideas about the force and the connection of the dyad and, and really give people like Carrie Fisher a proper send away. And, and the way that Ray was talking about how Luke finally got or how Mark Hamill finally got to be Luke in mm-hmm. this version, even though it was just that one scene, um, 
I loved it. And seeing Carrie Fisher's daughter and seeing the, the flashbacks of Carrie Fisher from episode four to her daughter now, they look so much alike. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind. And like the way they smile, the way they talk, they're just their, their structure and everything. It, it's so incredibly similar. And to know that it was her daughter playing her in that training sequence with Luke, I got to see it again now. Like it's just, it mm-hmm. really got me hooked. And the, the emotional core underneath it started seeping in. And like, I don't know. I was getting all misty eyed watching this stupid documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they do, man. Documentaries are the fucking worst with that shit. Yeah, for sure. I'd like the best part of The Last Jedi was the do- behind the scenes documentary on it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I can watch that shit like ad nauseum, but the movie itself. Yeah. Man, I just I struggle to like it. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I didn't really I didn't really have too many issues. Like I saw it a couple of times in theaters. So I think I've watched it like twice um since it came out oh, wow. on Blu-ray or whatever, but yeah, The Last Jedi, man, that's the one I struggle with. Okay, well, that's that's all I took away from this book. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan, I highly recommend you get it. Yeah. If you like Star Wars Agreed. art, I think you should definitely get it, too. Well, it's it, it honestly kind of felt like um, like the visual encyclopedias that they mm-hmm. put out after each film, or used right. to put out after each film. Um, but it didn't have any tie, well, any solid ties to anything other than, obviously, The Rise of Skywalker, because that's the era that it's written in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was excellent book i i'm glad i got it yeah um i'm now looking forward to reading the um the secrets of the jedi Mm -hmm. to see what that has in store because i'd like to you know sort of juxtapose the two against each other and see from because i think that one's written from luke's perspective i think yeah i would imagine so i think that's gonna be really kind of a cool read is that luke when he was disillusioned or is it luke right before he was disillusioned you know yeah i don't know it'll be interesting i gotta check it out definitely Um, so before we head out i do want to talk a little bit about the disney plus day which is kind of like a like i thought we were gonna get more yeah i kept waiting for my phone to keep going off (laughs) and i got two things i was was like huh (laughs) yeah i was expecting like trailers for the series that are coming or at least teasers of the series that are coming yeah and we got it we got like a tiny tiny here, this is what we got. So, oh shit, <laughs> I hit the wrong button. <laughs> there. I don't think you meant to pu- uh, push that button. No, I did not. Um, okay, so this is totally cut off, and I don't know why it's totally cut off. Why is that totally cut off? That's Hold what I figured. I'll figure this out. I won't figure it out. Okay, yeah, it's whatever. Anyway, it's under the helmet. It's a little. I don't even know if it's a documentary. It's like um. It's like a vignette. Yeah, it's just like a little special feature, you know, mm-hmm. and a little vignette about the history of Boba Fett. It says nothing new about what's coming or anything like that. But I didn't know this information about him, how he came to be, how he was actually just going to be like the armor was meant to be special troopers. And the reason why they didn't go that direction is because they ran out of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so George... And that's I knew that one. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Or that before he was in anything, he was in a parade with Vader. That I didn't know. Like, that was awesome. That was fucking badass. I was like, there was oh. only one thing I didn't like about this documentary. And that's, I have a bias, I understand. But there was no mention of how it started off as a fucking snow trooper. Oh, really? <laughs> and that, that pissed me off. I didn't know that. Yeah, like some of the uh, McCrary um, uh, concept art for the snowtroopers. That's what they ended up using for Boba Fett, huh. like running off with that. Huh. Yeah, because yeah, they did talk, like the artists talk about mm-hmm. like drafting different versions. But yeah, they didn't say, mm-hmm. other than McCrary, I don't think they even mentioned the snowtrooper or anything like that. No. no Interesting. Bullshit. Okay. Um, I did really like it. And I loved, you know, how they mm-hmm. talked about the people who were behind the mask at different points and um i don't know it was just a beautiful little fun exploration but it wasn't very Mm -hmm. in-depth and i don't know that there's a lot to say about it because we're only now developing who both it actually is right well and that's the funny thing like they even mentioned it in that like they give you the little um time lapse video of how much time he was actually in the film series how many lines he had like you know how do you extend that um yeah yeah, I, i really liked it 
So we did get that. If you have Disney Plus, you can get, see all of this stuff now. Uh, it's available. Um, the other one was a special look at the Obi Wan Kenobi uh, series that's going to be released, and it wasn't a special look. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was two or three or maybe four pieces of concept art, and then mm -hmm. a bunch of cutscenes from previous films. Yeah. And some training during COVID, and and it wasn't even like training. It was like a yeah. shot of training. Mm -hmm. And there was just, you know, clever editing of previous films talking about how um, Vader is going to be back and how Christensen is going to be back. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm, I, yeah. Even though we didn't get much on that, I'm so excited for this series. Definitely. Because we're going to be seeing, um, uh, oh, what are they called? The, um, it, this, uh, fuck me. The Jedi Hunters. Uh, the Inquisitory. Inquisitory. Or yes. whatever that was. Yeah. I'm stoked to see that. Yeah, definitely. You know they're going to find Kenobi, and he's going to have to go off world to stop him, or you know, make mm -hmm. turn an end to him, or something. Um, and I love the idea that there is going to be another fight between Kenobi and Vader. And here's the problem: when Vader says in Episode Four, "Now I am the master," uh, it it tells us that he lost if they ever did meet again. Mm -hmm. which kind of sucks because I know he was referencing what George originally had in mind of just that initial battle of, mm -hmm. you know, Kenobi and, and um, Skywalker. But now that they're doing a, a matchup again, what, who's going to win? It's got to be Kenobi, right? But then yeah, if it's Kenobi, course. then I almost think, I almost think it's going to be a draw. Like well, I, I mean, an absolute victory would be death. So, I mean, right. obviously he doesn't right. die. Right. But I guess, you know, the, the the other side of it would be that Kenobi cuts up Vader, you know, in little mm -hmm. pieces <laughs> again. Yeah. And then leaves him again. You know, I don't I don't think that's going to happen. I do think it's going to mm -hmm. be like Kenobi's going to be surprised at how powerful uh, Vader has become with mm -hmm. all the years and experience in the dark side. At this point, he's going to be like, oh, wow, this is not yeah. my apprentice. This is not my friend anymore at all and he's just gonna leave but he has to have that you know he's got to try because they were brothers for so long mm -hmm. that for him not to give it another shot when he feels finds out that he's actually alive because he thinks he's dead as far as yeah. we know so i think that's gonna be really really cool yeah I'm, I'm really excited for it um and then we got a tiny little meet the cast about the new willow series mm -hmm. uh which i'm really excited about i thought the deadpan delivery of those jokes were great in that. Yeah, that's the only thing I haven't seen yet. <laughs> oh man, it, I couldn't it's tiny. access it. It's short. I couldn't. Yeah, it's like a minute or something. I but can't access it for some reason. Like I could not huh. find it on the damn app or the oh, yeah on my TV, and I couldn't access it on my phone. So it's like, God damn it, I want to see this because I've heard nothing but funny things about it. Yeah, it's just witty banter between the the cast. That's really all it is. And uh, it's definitely worth it. And it's not American humor. It's it's British humor. And it's mm -hmm. great. As it should be. Yeah. The whole thing is just great. But it makes me, you know, feel like they do have a good connection. And that, you know, I think I have nothing to base this on. But it makes me want. Oh, here. Makes me. Oh, shit. <laughs> there. It's all, it's all messed up. Uh, it makes Hello. me want it to, you know, just be better because they have a better connection. Mm -hmm. And even if they ignore the whole sequel trilogy that was made uh, by George Lucas after the Willow film, I'm okay with that too, because, you know, they're just going to explore new aspects of this wonderful mm -hmm. character in the world. I don't know. Well, it's like at this point with, I mean, especially for people like us that are really into like the genre shit, like horror and stuff, it's easily acceptable to have a whole huge canon and then just start over from square one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it. Yeah. And they already did it with star Wars pretty much. So. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Definitely. With this too? <laughs> Screw it. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a little disappointed. We didn't get anything about Andor. We didn't get anything, um, mm -hmm. about Acolyte, you know, or, you know, just any of the other series that they've been teasing. But mm -hmm. now when we see that that rogue squadron films shelved permanently, Dude. Patty Jenkins just up and left. That shit, man. Like, one, 
I need those fucking movies. As a fan of the X-Wing series, I need those movies. Um, and she and was going to do it good, I thought. For fucking Wonder Woman? Like, 84 was the biggest piece of garbage I've seen in years. Like, I would honestly put that at Last Jedi status. Or actually, probably worse, because at least Last Jedi was Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like, that movie was fucking garbage. But I and don't... I like, that's not the Jedi. reason why she left. No, nah, but I'm going to blame that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, she, no, I know. she clearly it, had it, a it, schedule it, set out. You know, yeah. I'm going to make this film, and then I'm going to make this film, and then I'm going to... You know, when she agreed to sign on and, and sign contracts and stuff. So there's clearly something that happened behind the scenes to make her just say, just fuck it and walk away. Mm-hmm. Which is compounded by the fact that she did a whole video intro when she announced it, saying how it was going to be an ode to her father as a fighter pilot and veteran. Like, mm-hmm. to have that much invested in yeah, something shit, I forgot and about then that. just walk away, something real big had to happen. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the real big thing that happened was fucking COVID. Like, I guarantee that's why we don't have anything on Andor. That's why we don't have anything on Acolyte. Um, I mean, like, just Andor alone, um, like, with Alan Tudyk's part, like, he wouldn't be able to do anything right now anyways because he's off doing something else right? because COVID pushed it. But they did, like, they shot all the Mandalorian Season 3. Boba mm-hmm. Fett's all ready to go. You know, they did film during COVID, mm-hmm. so it's not like they couldn't. Yeah, and they showed that um, Obi Wan was training during COVID because they were all wearing masks and stuff. So mm. I don't know. I, I just think if they really wanted to make it, they could have found a way to make it. Mm-hmm. And there's just some reason why they didn't want to anymore. And it, there seems to be a tradition of that. You know, yeah. like Benioff and Weiss that we're gonna do this really great Star Wars trilogy and it's gonna be awesome. And they like they shit the bed on Game of Thrones in order to jump ship to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And then before they even ended post or pre-production, they jumped ship to Netflix, mm-hmm. of, of which they haven't done shit on. Either. Yeah, which that's the great part. <laughs> so that was years ago. Yeah, they saw a dick. So it makes you wonder. Like it, it was Benioff and Weiss. Then it was Lord and Miller with Solo. Um, mm-hmm. Then uh, Patty Jenkins, uh, um, uh, the guy that did um, Last Jedi. What was his name again? Uh, Ryan Ryan Johnson. Johnson. Ryan Johnson had his trilogy that he was going to do. That mm-hmm. was shelved. Like, what the fuck is going on with the film division of, of LucasArts? Or Lucas it's films? Disney. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because Disney yeah. is killing it with, like, all the series. They're killing mm-hmm. it with all the Marvel series and films. So why can't Star Wars get their damn act together for films? Right. It doesn't make any sense. I don't... And it's driving me nuts because, I mean, I shouldn't complain because we are getting some really great series. Mm-hmm. You know, which totally, I think it ultimately is better for Star Wars in the long run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I would like to see, you know, like Taito Waititi, uh, Taito I want to see his film and I hope it's still going and I hope mm-hmm. it doesn't suffer from the same curse that all these other films have suffered Right, from. that would be disappointing. I love that man. I, mean, I was really <laughs> excited. Everything he does. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really looking forward to Patty Jenkins' one, though. I thought the first Wonder Woman... It had some flawed aspects, but it was a pretty I damn good film. Loved the first one. Yeah, it was. And the really second one, good. I wanted to like, but it was just garbage. Yeah, there was there was aspects of it that in the theater I was okay with until I started thinking about it afterward. <laughs> and then Dude, I was like, I was, "Ooh!" <laughs> it was just like you're gonna take one of the most powerful fucking creatures in the DC universe, a fucking god, a leader of a warrior culture. And oh, I need a man yeah, for two fucking hours. <laughs> Fuck you. And then call it a feminist movie. You're That's true. A piece of shit. <laughs> that's really funny. I didn't think of it through that lens. <laughs> Dude, that's all I saw in that entire movie. All I was thinking and was the, like, the massive plot holes that didn't make sense to me. But... Well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, whatever. Like, if you're going to have a movie that's two fucking hours plus, it shouldn't have any plot holes, damn yeah. it. Yeah, you should be able to wrap everything. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, speaking of wrapping everything, is there anything else you wanted to cover? <laughs> no, I think, I think we got it. I would like to start doing these on a, a more regular interval, like maybe once a month or something. Mm-hmm. We, we haven't done one of these specific types of podcasts in a long time. You know, whenever the mm-hmm. series are out, 
we do you know episode reviews for the series and stuff, mm-hmm. but we haven't done a proper like podcast episode of news and stuff like that. So it's the rise of Skywalker, man. It fucked everything. It totally did. <laughs> it totally did. But um, yeah, I mean, we've got we got the Se- Secrets of the Jedi or whatever that book's called that we could talk about. We've got what we liked about the different trilogies. That Which we could that's talk one about. we really like. We have to yeah. do that one because I feel like we just kind of shit all over it. But we love it. And that means we have to watch them all again. I'm fine with that. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think, honestly, sitting down, the way for me to not completely hate The Last Jedi would be to actually spend a day watching the trilogy all at once. Because The Force Awakens, I like it. The Rise of Skywalker, I like it. It's just that middle part. I got to get past fucking Canto Bite. Like, if... Oh. Yeah. That's that's the problem that I have. Like oh, and I I boiled it down one. to that. Like, yeah, they changed a bunch of shit. Yeah, stuff that was supposed to go one way didn't because Ryan Johnson's like, Well, you guys wanted me to make it, so I'm gonna do it my way. Um it's just that canto bite shit and fucking DJ ugh. Yeah. Oof. There's there yeah, there's a lot not to like about that. As well. <laughs> but there are elements that are to like. So we will yes, definitely absolutely. do an episode on that next. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you all so much for tuning into this, uh, either live or after the fact. We really appreciate your time and attention. And we'd like to welcome you to, you know, suggest what you would like to see from us in the future. If there's different topics or ideas you'd like to, us to explore. Um, I started doing like like sort of unboxing uh, for, for Star Wars stuff that I get or, or Willow stuff. I started a, a Willow playlist on this channel which seems to be pretty popular amongst the Willow fans. So I'm glad that everyone's enjoying that. I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, and as soon as the new series comes out next year, we're going to do episode reviews of those as well. So you can expect more of that. But mm-hmm. again, this is all about Star Wars. That's really what this channel is all about. And so we're going to continue down this road and continue exploring this wonderful universe um, You know, that's uh, far, far away. I don't know. Yes. Galaxy far, far away. <laughs> How does that go <laughs> as a Star Wars fan? <laughs> I, what's this galaxy? Um, so There's until next possible. time, uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. May the Force be with you. Bye. Bye. I, I forgot to write that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>